What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to another edition of Kidney Disease Education Moment. I am your host, Steve Belcher. Thank you for joining me. Hey, this is going to be a short but impactful broadcast. Share this broadcast because let me tell you, MRSA is nothing to mess around. How's everyone doing this evening? I hope you're doing fine. I'm doing fine. Like I said, I want to do a quick education session before Warriors Quest comes up at 830 with Jared A. Brown. You need to tune into that. But right now, I've done many broadcasts on MRSA. And the reason why I return to this topic today, because I happen to see, I'm not going to say her name, but I happened to see a kidney warrior's picture she posted today while I was driving to a doctor's appointment. Now, I shouldn't be looking at Facebook while I'm driving, but yes. And so I saw this picture and I said, it doesn't look right because she complained of, of cramping. And then she said someone um, recommended she used Tiger Balm. And so after she used that Tiger Balm and put the dressing on, it got really worse. In fact, she had to go to the ER and was diagnosed with cellulitis. So that's what prompted me to do this show tonight. She didn't know anything about cellulitis. And that's the thing. Cellulitis, MRSA, a lot of warriors may not know they have it. They, they've scratched something and then it comes infected. And you just don't know. So let me go over this again. So people, warriors, if you're not a warrior, that you know what to look out for for MRSA. It, does, it just doesn't affect kidney warriors. It affects anyone, but people who are most at risk are people with chronic diseases. So let me get right into it. We don't have much time. So here we go. So what is MRSA? You might be asking me, those, those four letters, what does MRSA stands for. You may hear about it. Well, let me tell you, MRSA stands for methicillin staphylococcus. Well, let me let me back it up. Methicillin resistant staphylococcus auroras. And so I want to break that down. So Staphylococcus auroris, often referred to as staph, is a type of bacteria that is often present on the skin. It's often present on the skin or inside the nose of healthy individuals in the nasal flares. There you go, right there, nasal flares. Um. If, however, these bacteria get under the skin, an infection can occur. So if you scratch, you know, if you're itching and you're scratching, you break the skin and germs get in that, you can develop staph. Bloodstream infections, often known as septicemia, urinary tract infections, and pneumonia can also be caused by staph. So what's the common, what's the elephant in the room? Staph. Now, what does methicillin stands for? Methicillin is a type of penicillin. Methicillin, penicillin, the illins. <laughs> you know, that's why you know they're part of the same family. It was developed in 1959, but later replaced by other penicillin forms. 
the word resistant, methicillin resistant, means that bacteria will no longer be killed by an antibiotic. MRSA, therefore, a Staphylococcus auroris organism that has become resistant to all penicillins. Who gets MRSA? Share this broadcast, y'all, because this is why education in Dallas is important. You can't just do it once and forget about it. It has to be a rolling, constant thing because somebody may miss it today and forget about it tomorrow. So that's why this education has to be constant rolling. So who gets MRSA? Staph infections occur more often in people with now check this out. Follow me here. Staph infections occur more often in people with weakened immune systems. So if you have a transplant, weakened immune system, you're at risk for staph infection. Persons with chronic illnesses, such as diabetes, it doesn't matter if it's type 1 or 2, diabetes and kidney failure are therefore at greater risk. So if you got diabetes, chronic disease, kidney failure, you're at greater risk. I didn't make that up. That's the research saying that. See, this information is out there, but the bigger clinics don't want to educate you because they're too busy turning over machines. So, according to the CDC, MRSA infections are seen more commonly in healthcare facilities, such as dialysis facilities, nursing homes, hospitals, such as hospitals, nursing homes, and dialysis centers. When a MRSA infection originate outside of the healthcare setting, like in the street, the community, it is known as a community acquired MRSA. So if you got, say if you was walking in the alley, you was walking and you walk, you had on some shorts and you uh you walked against something like a fence, something that scraped your leg, a nail or something, something rusty that happened outside of a healthcare um facility. This is considered community acquired MRSA infection. With this form of MRSA, skin infections, pimples, and boils, okay? Pimples and boils. That's what you need to look out for. And the person who I reached out today with that picture, had pimples and boils. In fact, let me um, let me do this. Let me do this right quick so I can give you a idea of what we're talking about. Okay, hold on right quick, guys. Um, this is no joke, no joke at all. So if you got diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease, make sure that if you get caught up 
with MRSA that it's addressed real soon. You get a cut on your leg and you don't know what it is, make sure uh, you look at it because it's nothing to play around with. And I'm trying to load. Uh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Wait, a minute, I gotta find my overlay. Okay, here we go. Here we go, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay. Now, here we go. If you have a situation where your leg starts to look like this, I don't care if you're black or white, if your skin starts to look shiny and you start seeing pimples like this, boil, and you haven't got treated yet, make sure you get to the emergency room as fast as you can so you can get antibiotics. Okay? You need to get this cleared up because this can get real serious and Actually, it could turn into a bloodstream infection. And that's something, guys, um, that's something you don't want, especially if you got diabetes. And we all know with diabetes that, um, you know, diabetes mess with your, your arteries and, um, your blood supply and blood supply can't get down to, to um, feed that wound, the nutrients and the proteins it takes to promote healing. Um, it's a wrap. And now this is how it may start off. Okay. Real mild, reddish, warm. You definitely want to get that checked out. Okay. All right. Now. So again, you normally see skin pimples and boils. All right. Now this is, you can get this from a community acquired. All right. Now that's what that looks like. And that's what the person who brought me, who showed me her picture, kind of looked like that. So be careful, guys. Now, can MRSA be prevented? That's what we want to know. Can it be prevented? And the good news is absolutely. Absolutely. Staph aurorous infections are more likely to spread from person to person if close skin to skin contact is present, hygiene is poor, living conditions are crowded, or skin is not intact as seen with cuts and abrasions or at a catheter site. So again, staph aurorous infections are more likely to spread from person to person if close skin contact is present, poor hygiene, crowded living conditions, or skin is not intact like this. Now, to help avoid a MRSA infection, the CDC recommends Keep your hands clean by washing thoroughly with soap and water or using an alcohol-based sanitizer. Two, keep cuts and scrapes clean and covered with a bandage until healed. Three, avoid contact with other persons, wounds, or bandages. Four, avoid sharing personal items such as a towel or razors. Five, avoid dialyzing with a hemodialysis catheter 
used only when essential. Six, if a hemodialysis catheter is in place, wear a mask during put on and take off. Seven, when holding your access site post-treatment, wear a glove. That's why we say wear a glove. We promote that. A lot of people say, no, I'm not going to wear no glove. Wear a glove and remove it before leaving your chair. Then wash your hands. Can MRSA infections be treated? Absolutely. Antibiotics, other penicillins can be used to treat MRSA. Treating these infections, however, is sometimes difficult. It may require special antibiotics, plus successful treatment may take longer. So if you got MRSA, like the skin, just be ready for the long haul to treat that and don't get discouraged. Following measures to avoid infection is, of course, the best approach. Now, I'm going to go through the comments, and I want to end the show. We got Warriors Quest with Jared A. Brown coming up on a half hour. Here we go. Um, hey, Bridget, how you doing? God bless you. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you joining tonight. Hey, Jonathan, thank you for joining. God bless you. I did. I don't either. What is that? Okay, so I hope I explained. If anybody didn't understand anything, please let me know. Or if you want me to go back over something, I definitely will. But again, Bridget, thank you for joining. God bless you. Thank you again, Jonathan. God bless you. Yeah, it's definitely serious, man. And that's why we're trying to get this education out there. Miss Joyce Monroe, thanks for watching. God bless you. Hey, Jonathan, thanks. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, God told me he wanted me to educate 3 million people, so I'm on that mission. Oh, Donna, thank you for watching. God bless. Yep, blisters is part of that. Yep. Oh, thank you for watching. We got Sade Cutler. Uh, clinical licensed social worker and CEO of My Empowering Impact joining us tonight. Thank you for watching, Sade. God bless you. She was on last night with some great tips on navigating through the patient grievance process. We talked about that last night. If you didn't see the show, you can go to Urban Health Outreach Media, go under videos, and look up um, the show at 9 o'clock under that. It was a great show. Again, thanks, Sade, for participating. Hey, Bridget. Yup, yup, Jonathan, amputation as well. Barbara, thank you for watching. Thank you. God bless you. Yup, Donna. Oh, man, I hope that resolved itself. Thank you for sharing that. God bless you and your and your daughter. Absolutely, Jonathan. They always wear gloves. Thank you for chiming in. Man, well, thank you for watching. God bless you. How do I get my clearance number higher to where they can't cut my... You don't want to cut your time. I, I'm sorry to say that. I know you want your clearance higher, your time cut. But it, it just doesn't work that way. And I'm not trying to be funny, but basically, the more time, the better you're going to feel. Because our kidneys work 24-7, seven days a week. So they're always working. So just think about it. If my kidneys work in 24-7, clearing out the toxins, then if the, if the uh, kidney, the dialyzer, the filter is acting as your kidney, then you need more time to clear that 
to clean your blood. So you got to think, you got to think in the opposite of maybe you can go home and do home dialysis and maybe do four days a week, maybe five hours, blood flow rate 250. I know some great home dialysis experts that can uh, definitely hit you up and educate you and you can get a great better clearance, feel better um, and do a lot better than going in uh, outpatient and doing say three hours or two and a half and say maybe you may come in one day overloaded. I'm not saying you will, but just say if you had to take off a little more, then you're going to have to, um, you know, it's going to be hard on your heart. So I, I want to see you better, not, you know, having issues with your heart. Yes. And so, man, anytime you want to come on the show, uh, I don't know if we're friends on Facebook, but if we're not, send me a, a friend request and I'll hook you up with the right people that are doing home dialysis. Don't mind educating you and they share their journey. It, I'm sorry, <laughs> their journey. Now, let me tell you this, Manuel. I got I know people at home doing home dialysis with clearances of two and greater. Two and greater. Now, you know the standard is 1.2, but these people at home doing two and greater. And so, I mean, I know you're educated because you're, you're trying to get that clearance. Now, if you still... now. One thing I can say, if you still got urinary output, that could work in your favor. All right. You make it do it. If you still got urinary output and you got a great amount, like say 500 to 1,000 a day, maybe 300 to 800 cc's, that may work. But I would talk to your, your nephrologist about that. And uh, But reach out to me what you can do. Maybe cut your diet. Um, possibly take um, um, Renadil. You could try that. It's a probiotic. Uh, this is it right here. It has uh, it's a supplement. It's not regulated by the FDA. It doesn't treat, cure, or diagnose. It doesn't do none of that but it helps clear the toxins by using the pre and probiotics. Just go to their website. I got it scrolling across. Do the research yourself. Helps maintain kidney function. So with that being said, uh, oh, and if you go there and you, and you decide that you want to um, use this product, if you like what you see, you see that code, Urban Kidney 20, you can put that in and get yourself a discount. All right. So with that being said, guys, let me clear for Jared A. Brown. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. And we're going to keep coming back with this education. I'm Steve Belcher with Urban Health Outreach Media. Thank you for watching. God bless. Peace. <laughs>